Welcome back. My name is Jim Kaysen, and we're talking about biblical faith. And now we've talked on the subject of faith by itself, but now we're talking about faith, foolishness, and presumption. And um, faith, of course, means you simply trust God, and then foolishness is when you act unwisely, and presumption is when you take something for granted. All right, now we come with a, to a big subject. And that has to do with uh, divine health and healing. All right, first of all, when we talk about medicine, prescriptions, and you're in a, have a certain situation where you need prescriptions, just understand that medicine or prescriptions will not heal you, but can keep your body alive until healing comes. Sometimes the healing comes because that's a, a natural thing with the body. It fights these things, you know, if you have a strong immune system. And in time, the healing will come. But the medication keeps you alive until, you, until your healing manifests. Sometimes you don't need any faith for that because it's something that the immune system can handle, but it takes some time. But if you don't have the prescriptions, the thing will, will, will get worse too fast for the immune system to handle sometimes or what have you. Now, I'm not a doctor, but, but these are some of the things that I've watched. And so now, for example, you have diabetes and insulin. Uh, you know, when people sometimes, like uh, I know of a child who almost died at age eight, and, uh, and that's when they decided, this was an adoptive child, did not have any history on the father. And so at age eight, almost died, ended up in the emergency room. And of course, the sugar level was 800 is as far as they could read it. And it was near death. And so he almost died, but he ended up in the emergency room in ICU and he came back to life. Now it was not his fault. I mean, that was just what he inherited when he was born into this world. He was born with the worst kind of diabetes that you could get. All right, so he's a child, so it's not his fault, but he's got it. Now, if he wants to stay alive, he's going to have to, and he learned to use the needle and to inject the insulin to keep the, everything level. And so he was on that. Now, he lived a, a full life. He was born again, spirit-filled. He was with the youth group of the church. He was a master musician. He... He was a master carpenter. He lived his full life, and I don't have the answers for everything. Even though he went to a church that believed in healing and all of this, it never did manifest. And, it, and of course, he died young. And, um, but if it hadn't been for diabetes and insulin, he never would have made it to age 35. And so he got married, and then, of course, adopted a two-year-old son. Or his son was two years old when he, when he died. So I don't have the answers to all of it, but it kept him, see, if, if it wouldn't have been for, for insulin, you know, and they discovered it, he would have died at age eight if they had not discovered he had diabetes. He would have died, but he got to the hospital in time. And so the insulin gave him all the way to age 35. Instead of dying at age eight, he was still able to live a, a, a full life, get married, and adopted a two-year-old son. All right, so the medicine didn't heal him, the insulin didn't heal him, but it prolonged his life to where at least he could get 35 years on this earth. All right, so then, surgery. Well, again, um, I know that um, surgery can, pro I guess that's another way to say it, surgery can't necessarily heal you, but it can pro 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 prolong your life. For example, there's this business of cancer all the time. Well, there's times, many times, I guess, in my lifetime, uh, I'm 81 years old now, where I've had friends or relatives, they had stage four cancer, stage three, they had tumors uh, here, there, everywhere, what have you, and they uh, had surgery, removed these tumors, stopped them from growing, you know, got rid of them, removed them completely, and they lived many years after that. Whereas if they had not had the surgery, and of course, even though they're Christians, you know, they're believing for their healing. And many times it doesn't happen because, you know, you think you're in faith, but you're really not. But anyway, surgery removes the tumors completely. And they had many years of, to live after that. 
and and so again surgery doesn't heal you but it gets rid of some things <laughs> until and sometimes these cancers come back again but years later and so then but really it's your faith if you believe in divine healing that will keep those that will say okay they've removed the tumors i believe with all of my heart they can't come back again and you can you know keep them away depending on where your level of faith is and of course the important thing is don't wait too long before you go to a doctor you may have symptoms of a heart attack or, or you know you've got cancerous tumors or something and you're just believing you're healed you believe you believe but you, you're going to have to come to a point where you don't want to wait too long to go to the doctor one lady that's well known uh, her uh, was well known in the faith circles, she waited too long before she went to the doctor. She was just holding on, confessing for her healing, and then allowed the, as, as I understand it, that the, the, the cancer spread in her hip and she got some damage in her hip that she wouldn't have had if she had gone to the doctor earlier. That's the way I understand her sharing it. And so, um, don't wait too long. Now, I was in the military and I joined up with the army in age 17. And so then I, in a very young age, uh, of course I had to have physicals in the art to get, you know, when you get into the army, you have physicals and you get your shots and all this sort of stuff. So I got into the habit of, of physicals. And so now, you know, for many years, um, I would be, I had got physicals because I learned to fly airplanes and Every two years, you have to have a physical if you want to keep your license current and everything else. The FAA, requ FAA requires it. Physicals for insurance policies, a lot of physicals. And then in recent years, you know, my doctor, like in this particular place now where we live, for the, where I've lived rather, for the last 11 and a half years, from the day we moved here, we got familiar with this doctor and he required a physical every six months. And so every six months, my doctor does blood work. And, and his philosophy is, if we see anything that's starting to move south, then we can make corrections and bring it back on. And I know I don't have a problem with um, cholesterol, but it was one time my doctor says, oops, Jim, your, your cholesterol just went over the borderline. You're just starting to get a little too high. And of course he told me what to uh, restrict my eating on. You know, I was eating, I love butter and heavy cream. <laughs> That's how I cook. So I just cut back just a little bit and I haven't had a problem ever since. So, But see, he caught it early enough to where I was able to just, nothing significant, it's just instead of eating a pound of butter, just eat a half a pound. <laughs> oh, brother, what a life. All right, so don't wait too long to go to the doctor. And sometimes, you know, I remember one time, you know, I had a physical and the uh, I was up then I left town on a trip I was I was living in Oklahoma at the time and got to, up to South Dakota and my wife called me she says the results of the x-ray came back and they and that shows that you got cancer in your lung and I said well if I had cancer you think I'd know it and then I figured you know I'll just finish the trip I only have a few days left and she said oh you jerk well, well she called my wife and called me a jerk <laughs> so I jumped into my airplane and flew back to Tulsa they took, it, took another x-ray and he confirmed that it was spreading. And so they says, well, we need, the only way we know for sure is we need to do a biopsy. Well, I had a lot of pressure from my wife and what have you. And so I says, okay, okay, okay. So they cut me open, you know, went in, found out that there was no cancer. And there was nothing to remove either. But they did find out there was some condition that... Uh, if it really was to manifest in its fullness, you just would have a problem breathing. And I don't know what that was. But I took my, I took a, now that I knew what it was, I went ahead and uh, exercised my faith. And of course it never did uh, do afterwards. I went to, uh, I was flying at the time, went to Mayo Clinic twice every two years to double check. And they confirmed that it was gone. It was, it just was stagnant, I guess is what you'd say. So it was not a problem, so I was able to keep flying. All right, this is our sessions come to an end already. So uh, we'll see you in the next session. Just stay healthy, and I'll see you when I get back. Amen. Well, Desiree.